Hello, and welcome to the webinar on Understanding and Preventing Harassment in the Workplace. I am being harassed or witnessing harassment. What can I do? My name is Anne Clenet, and I am a policy and program consultant with the Alberta Human Rights Commission. I am located in the Calgary office, and I will be your moderator for this webinar. Today's presenter is Sushita Sami, who is a diversity specialist with the Alberta Human Rights Commission, and she is joining me from her office in Edmonton. Welcome, Sushita. Hi, Anne. The human rights legislation referred to in this webinar is the Alberta Human Rights Act. The commission referenced is the Alberta Human Rights Commission. If you are attending this webinar from outside of Alberta, or if you are in Alberta but are from an organization that falls under federal jurisdiction, check with your federal, provincial, or territorial human rights commission for more information. The information presented in today's webinar is not legal advice. Rather, it is information that you can use to take action on incidents of harassment in your workplace. This webinar is being recorded and you will be able to access the recorded session on the Alberta Human Rights Commission's eLearning webpage. The webcast will be available approximately one week following the live webinar date. As well, the materials shared will be available as downloadable resources. This webinar is scheduled for approximately one hour. The first portion of the webinar will be a presentation, and then we will have time near the end for questions and answers and closing comments. Before we begin the presentation, we would like to invite you to take a poll. We will be using polls throughout the presentation, which allows us to get a feel for our audience and helps us to adapt our content to meet your needs. It gives you time to reflect on your own organization's operations, assess your understanding of the concepts being presented, and think about opportunities for moving forward on dealing with harassment in your organization. Please note that all of your individual answers are anonymous and confidential, and only the total responses appear on the screen as numbers or percentages. So let's begin with our first poll. The first short answer question is, specify how many of you are in the room participating in this webinar. Please include yourself in this number, and if it's just you at your computer, please enter the number one and press submit. Okay, hopefully everyone has had a chance to put in your numbers. And we thank you for providing that information as it helps us to get a better sense of how many people and organizations are interested in this topic and are looking to better understand harassment and learn how to prevent and deal with it in their workplaces. So our second question is, what type of organization are you representing? Are you from a small business with one to 49 employees, a medium-sized business with 50 to 99 employees, or a large-sized business with more than 100 employees? Are you from a nonprofit agency, an educational institution, the government, or a union? Or are you from another type of organization? So go ahead and choose your response if you haven't already done so. Okay, your answers are coming in, and let's have a look at what we have. Oh, it seems like we have almost half of our participants from large-sized businesses today. Um, businesses are a key group that we work with, so we're really pleased to have so many representatives from the business sector as well as the other sectors that are represented today. So let's move on to our next question, which is, why are you attending this webinar? Have you experienced or are you currently experiencing harassment in your workplace? Are you witnessing or have you witnessed harassment in your workplace? Are you here because you have a general interest in the topic, or do you have another reason for attending today's webinar? For this question, you can choose more than one answer, so please go ahead and make your selections. So the results are starting to come in, and let's have a look at what you've said. Oh, so it looks as if a number of you are indicating that you are here today because you have a general interest in this topic, and as well, some of you are saying that you have experienced harassment or have witnessed it in your workplace. We frequently hear that harassment, both experiencing and witnessing it, continues to occur in workplaces, and we hope that the information <coughs> provided today will give you knowledge and tools to effectively respond to it. 
And for those of you who indicated that you have other reasons for attending today's webinar, please feel free to use this survey at the end of the webinar to share those reasons with us. So thanks for participating, and now I will turn it over to Sushila to start the presentation. Thank you, Anne, and welcome to those who have joined us for this webinar. We decided to provide this webinar, I'm being harassed or witnessing harassment. What can I do? As I often get calls from employees saying that they are being harassed or witnessing harassment in their workplaces and do not know what they should do. Employees must educate themselves as to what they can do if they are being harassed or witnessing harassment. I hope the information provided in this webinar will inform you of the actions you could take to stop harassment in your workplace. In today's presentation, we'll discuss harassment on the areas and grounds in the Alberta Human Rights Act. We will also discuss how to recognize harassment and what to do if you are being harassed or witnessing harassment. The Alberta Human Rights Act prohibits discrimination on specific areas and grounds. You can find detailed information in our information sheet entitled Protected Areas and Grounds under the Alberta Human Rights Act. A link to this information sheet is located in our resource list. The protected grounds of discrimination in the Alberta Human Rights Act are race, religious beliefs, color, gender, gender identity, gender expression, physical disability, mental disability, age, ancestry, place of origin, family status, marital status, source of income, and sexual orientation. Please note that gender identity and gender expression were added in December 2015 as expressly prohibited grounds under the Alberta Human Rights Act. For more information about these protected grounds, please see the notice of changes in our resource list or on our website. The Act prohibits discrimination in the following areas. Statements, publications, notices, signs, symbols, emblems, and other representation. Goods, services, accommodation, and facilities customarily available to the public, tenancy, employment practices, employment applications and advertisements, and membership in trade unions, employers' organizations, or occupational associations. For a detailed explanation of the protected areas and grounds, view the videocast, the Alberta Human Rights Act Overview, on the Commission's e-learning page. A link is provided in the resource list. Harassment is a form of discrimination that is prohibited under the Alberta Human Rights Act. It may be based on one or more grounds of the Act and can be based on gender, gender identity or gender expression, sexual harassment, racial due to one's race, color or ancestry, can be due to one's mental or physical disabilities, can be on religious beliefs or because of one's place of origin, family status, marital status, age, sexual orientation or source of income. Harassment occurs when someone is subjected to unwelcome, uninvited conduct that may be verbal, nonverbal, or physical. Harassment tends to have a negative impact on the employee's work performance and creates an intimidating or hostile work environment, not only for the individual being harassed, but also for others in the workplace. Harassment can be one serious incident or a series of incidents. One incident, such as physical assault, 
may be enough because of the seriousness of the conduct to constitute harassment or to create a poisoned work environment. When jokes or rude comments are made, a pattern of conduct may be necessary before harassment or a poisoned work environment will be found to have occurred. The standard for determining harassment is the reasonable person test, that a reasonable person ought to have known that the behavior is unwelcome. It is the effect of the harassment on the individual experiencing the harassment and not the intent that is important. For example, when I used to investigate complaints of harassment involving offensive jokes and behaviors, the alleged harasser would often say, I just thought it was funny and did not intend to offend anyone. However, just because they did not intend to offend does not mean that the behavior is not offensive to those listening to the jokes or those observing the behaviors. Thanks, Sheila. I would now like you, the webinar participant, to take a few moments to think about the kinds of behaviors that would constitute harassment and type your answers into the poll question on your screen. Please make sure that you respond in the poll question answer box and not in the Q&A text box. So take about 10 seconds or so to write down your examples. I'll give you a few more moments to complete your answers and click Submit. The answers that you provided are for your own reflection, so they won't be displayed on the screen. As Sushila is doing her presentation, you can determine if the behaviors that you listed constitute harassment. Let us see if you identified the behaviors and actions that could be considered harassment. Here are some examples of harassment on the grounds in the Act. Verbal or physical abuse and derogatory remarks because of one's gender identity or gender expression. Jokes, innuendos or taunts about ancestry, place of origin, or mental or physical disabilities. Display of racially offensive images. Intimidation and sexually offensive gestures. We are focusing on sexual harassment in this section because sexual harassment, once a hidden and ignored problem, has received much publicity in recent years. The majority of requests for workshops in the Commission's workshop program are to inform and educate employees on their roles and responsibilities in preventing sexual harassment in their workplaces. In his book, Sexual Harassment, A Guide for Understanding and Preventing, Arjun Atwal states that studies confirm that sexual harassment is one of the most serious and widespread problems facing women in employment today, and that people are surprised to learn how deep-rooted the practice is. Sexual harassment is a form of discrimination based on the grounds of gender, gender identity, and or gender expression in the Alberta Human Rights Act. It is unwelcome sexual behavior, which includes sexual advances, unwanted requests for sexual favors, and other unwanted behavior that adversely affects or threaten to affect directly or indirectly a person's job security, working conditions, prospects for promotion, earning a living, or getting a job. Sexual harassment can be verbal, nonverbal, or physical conduct of a sexual nature. It may be one serious incident like physical or sexual assault or a series of incidents. One form of sexual harassment called quid pro quo 
is when someone in a position of authority, like a supervisor or manager, attempts to exert it over an employee with negative consequences. For example, a supervisor using their authority over salary, promotion, and employment attempts to coerce someone who works for them to grant sexual favors. If the worker agrees to the supervisor's request, tangible benefits follow. If the worker refuses, job benefits could be denied. Another form of sexual harassment is perpetrated by a supervisor, co-worker, or client who makes sexual comments, sexual jokes, and unwelcome sexual remarks or behavior. Sexual harassment demeans and humiliates the employee and creates a poison work environment. It is emotionally abusive and creates an unhealthy, unproductive workplace. Behavior that is acceptable to both parties, such as dating or flirting, would not be considered sexual harassment. The following are some examples of sexual harassment. Verbal, su suggestive jokes and remarks about a person's body, clothes, appearance, or sex life. Unwelcome invitation or request for dates, whether direct or indirect, and not taking no for an answer. Outright demands for sexual favors. Nonverbal includes display of pornography or other sexually offensive or derogatory images, and leering, ogling, or lewd gestures. Physical includes unwanted physical conduct, such as touching, padding, or pinching, and physical or sexual assault. Physical or sexual assault, which is a violent attack, is a criminal offense, and the victim of the assault would have to report it to law enforcement authorities. Although the majority of sexual harassment complaints are made by women about men harassing them, Anyone can experience sexual harassment, men, women, or transgender individuals. Anne will now facilitate another poll for us. Sheila shared some examples of harassment and sexual harassment with us. Think back to those examples and answer this question. Which of the following examples, sorry, which of the following are examples of harassment that are based on the grounds in the Alberta Human Rights Act? derogatory comments, offensive jokes and taunts about someone's appearance or mental or physical disability, display of pornography or racist images, unwelcome invitations and or requests for dates and not taking no for an answer, mutually acceptable workplace dating, or all of the above. For this question, you are able to select more than one answer. So please go ahead and answer this question if you haven't already done so. Okay, let's take a look at the results. So it seems that most of you feel that derogatory comments, offensive jokes, and taunts about someone's appearance or mental or physical disability, the display of pornography or racist images, and unwelcome invitations and or requests for dates and not taking no for an answer are all examples of harassment. And of course, those are the correct answers. These are all examples of harassment that are based on the grounds in the Act. Mutually acceptable workplace dating is not sexual harassment. So now let's look at what happens when the harassment is not related to a ground in the Alberta Human Rights Act. Harassment that is not based on one or more of the 15 grounds in the Alberta Human Rights Act cannot be dealt with by the Alberta Human Rights Commission. For example, micromanaging work or belittling a worker because of one's personal dislike and not because of their race or gender or any other protected ground in the Act is harassment 
and can be harmful to the individual experiencing it and to the organization. However, it is not discriminatory under the Alberta Human Rights Act. Harassment that is not on the prohibited grounds in the Alberta Human Rights Act has to be dealt with by the organization's harassment prevention policy, a collective agreement in unionized work environments, or by the courts. Anne will now facilitate another poll for us. Our next poll is going to focus on the responsibilities of employees. What are some of the employees' responsibilities in helping the employer prevent harassment and create a respectful, inclusive workplace? Is it an employee's responsibility to intervene by asking the coworker who is harassing another coworker to stop the behavior? To provide information on what was witnessed when the organization investigates the complaint? To ask for and obtain a copy of the organization's harassment prevention policy? Or should the employee do nothing as, as it is not their problem or responsibility? Again, you can choose more than one option for this question, so go ahead and choose your response. Okay, your answers are coming in. Let's have a look. And it seems that most of you are saying that those first three options are the employee's responsibilities. And of course, that is the correct answer. Those are all responsibilities of employees. So Sheila will now tell us more about employee responsibilities when it comes to preventing harassment in the workplace. Everyone in the workplace has to work together to ensure that the workplace is respectful and free of harassment for all employees. Employers are legally responsible for maintaining a safe, healthy workplace free from harassment for all employees, customers, and clients. However, employees can assist the employer in maintaining a harassment-free respectful workplace. Treat everyone with respect. Just as you do not want to be harassed, ensure that you do not harass others with your jokes, comments, and other behavior. If someone informs you that your joke, comment, or behavior is offensive, stop the behavior and do not repeat it. Find out if your company has a harassment prevention policy. If they do have a policy, get a copy and make sure you read and understand it. If your company does not have a written policy, you can still find out the process to follow when you or someone else is being harassed. Intervene to stop the harassment when you see a coworker being harassed. If you are able to, ask the harasser to stop the behavior. Inform them of your company's harassment prevention policy if you have one. Provide information on the harassment you observed. When your organization is taking appropriate action to respond to a complaint of harassment, provide any information you may have on the incident. As part of our Understanding and Preventing Harassment in the Workplace series, the Commission has a webcast entitled roles and responsibilities of organizations that includes employers' responsibilities in creating harassment-free workplaces. It is available for viewing on our website. There is also a link to this webcast in the resource list. If you are being harassed by a coworker, inform the person harassing you that you do not welcome their behavior and ask them to stop. However, if you are unable to tell the harasser to stop because you are afraid or have been threatened, inform the manager or supervisor or follow the steps outlined in your policy. If you ask the person who is harassing you to stop and the behavior continues, follow the procedures in your policy 
If your organization does not have a policy, inform your supervisor, the human resource manager, or the union if you are in a unionized environment. Keep a record of the harassment. It is important to maintain the following information, which can be found in the resource list. The name of the alleged harasser, the dates and times of the incidents. If the harassment continued over a period of time, include the date and time for each incident. The details of the harassment. What kind of behaviors have happened to you? Be very specific. For example, if you were called offensive sexual or racial names, note down exactly what was said. If the harassment continued over a period of time, provide details of each allegation of harassment. Include how the harassment made you feel. What actions did you take to stop the behavior? Did you tell the harasser to stop? Did you take other action? Note these down. If the harassment continued for some time and you did not do anything, include the reasons for not taking any action. Keep copies of documents. For example, if the harasser sent you a note or letter or other documents that show the harassment, keep it. If a coworker or supervisor saw the harassing behavior, take note of their names. Tell a supervisor or your union representative about the harassment. Sometimes harassment, especially sexual harassment, takes place behind closed doors or when no one is around. Telling the supervisor or the union is important as these individuals could be a witness to what you told them when the harassment happened. If your organization has a harassment prevention policy, follow the procedure in the for policy. Inform the person identified as the key contact for you in the policy. Provide the complaint in writing or orally as stated in the policy. If there are forms that you must use to keep your complaint, complete these forms and keep to the timelines that are provided in your policy. Keep copies of the forms and all written information you provide to the organization. The policy will outline how the complaint will be dealt with, whether it will be investigated or dealt with, dealt with through mediation. It will also inform you as to who will mediate or investigate. Cooperate with the organization when they are responding to your complaint of harassment by mediation, investigation, or through other means. If your organization does not have a harassment prevention policy, report the harassment to your supervisor or manager human resources or the union and provide the documentation you have maintained on the harassment. If you are being harassed by your supervisor or by a member of your organization's management team, make your complaint to the person who is one or two levels above the alleged harasser. For example, if your supervisor is harassing you, Inform their manager or director. Contact human resources or talk to the union if you are in a unionized environment. And will now facilitate a poll for us. So Sheila has covered some very important information for us on what to do if you are being harassed. Let's review what she covered through a multiple choice question. Which of the following are things that you can do if you are being harassed? Tell your supervisor that you are being harassed. Keep a detailed record of the harassment incidents, including the date, time, and how the harassment made you feel. Follow your company's harassment prevention policy, or all of the above. Go ahead and make your selections.
Okay, your responses are coming in, and let's take a look at them. It seems that the majority of you are indicating that you should do D, all of the above, and of course that is the correct answer. You should do all of those things if you are experiencing harassment in your workplace. Back to Sushila. Unions have a responsibility in working with the employer to maintain a respectful, harassment-free workplace. They are obligated to take appropriate actions if they are informed of harassment by their members. If you inform your manager, supervisor, or human resources about the harassment and they are not taking any action to stop it, talk to your union representative. The union may ask you to file a grievance or take other action. Ensure that you provide your union representative with all the information related to the harassment. The records that you have kept of the harassment would be very helpful for the union when they are discussing it with management of your company. In addition to bringing the harassment to the attention of your employer or union, you can, at any time, make a complaint to the Alberta Human Rights Commission. While you are encouraged to stop the harassment by reporting it to your employer, remember that you may, at all times, contact the Alberta Human Rights Commission to submit a complaint. Now look at, let's look at what you can do if you witness harassment in your workplace. If you witness harassment, step in and ask the harasser to stop the offensive behavior. Sometimes the individual being harassed may be afraid to speak up to ask the alleged harasser to stop the behavior. For example, if you hear someone making sexual, racial, or other offensive jokes, Tell them that you find it offensive and ask them to stop making those jokes. Inform them of your company's harassment prevention policy if one is in place. If the individual does not stop the behavior, inform the supervisor, manager, human resource manager, or union in a unionized work environment of what you saw or heard and how it made you feel. When a complaint is being investigated by your company or by the Human Rights Commission, you can assist by being a witness to the complaint. Tell the investigator what you saw happen or what the employee who was harassed told you. This will be very helpful to the investigator who may not have seen the harassment. You can make a complaint to the Alberta Human Rights Commission on behalf of the person who was being harassed. Talk to the person being harassed. If they feel afraid or are unable to make a complaint, ask them if you could make a complaint on their behalf to the Alberta Human Rights Commission. If they agree, call the Commission's confidential inquiry line. When you are making a complaint on behalf of someone else, you would have to provide that individual's name address, and phone number so they can be contacted by the Commission for more information. It is important to note that the Alberta Human Rights Act allows any person who believes on reasonable grounds that the Act has been contravened to make a complaint. Therefore, you may make a complaint to the Commission even though the individual being harassed does not agree to come forward. For example, if you saw a co-worker being sexually harassed and your co-worker does not want to make a complaint, you can still submit a complaint on your own. Information on the confidential inquiry line and the complaint form and guide is available on the Commission's website and will also be provided at the end of the presentation. There are also links in our resource list.
In order to make a complaint to the Alberta Human Rights Commission, the harassment must have happened in an organization that is under provincial jurisdiction. Over 80% of businesses in Alberta fall under provincial jurisdiction and therefore come under the Alberta Human Rights Act. The remaining 20% of businesses fall under federal jurisdiction and are covered by the Canadian Human Rights Act. It must be based on one of the six areas in the Alberta Human Rights Act, such as employment practices, employment applications and advertisements, goods, services, and accommodation or facilities customarily available to the public, tenancy, and so on. It must be based on one, of, one or more of the 15 grounds in the Act, such as race, religious beliefs, mental or physical disability. Sexual harassment complaints are made on the grounds of gender, gender identity, and uh, gender expression. The complaint, must be the complaint must be made to the Alberta Human Rights Commission within one year after the alleged incident of harassment. In addition, the person making the complaint must have reasonable grounds for believing that the act has been contravened. If you are being harassed or witnessing harassment, take one of the actions that I have outlined. Harassment does not go away. If you do not stop it, it will only get worse. The Alberta Human Rights Act prohibits retaliation. An employer cannot take any negative action against an employee for making a complaint, trying to make a complaint, giving information about a complaint, or helping someone else make a complaint. The Act also prohibits individuals from making complaints with malicious intent that are frivolous, that is, with no merit whatsoever, or vexatious, made with the sole purpose of harassing another person. The onus for preventing and dealing with harassment in the workplace is on everyone in the organization, working together to ensure that the workplace is respectful and free of harassment. This includes management, human resources, all employees, including full-time, part-time, casual, and, of course, contractors and the unions that are in unionized environment. We will now show you a short video that portrays Indira's experiences at her workplace. Once the clip is finished, we will have a few questions for you to answer. Here is Indira's story. I was the receptionist. I greeted the customers, found out what work was needed, then made sure correct work orders went into the workshop. When the work was finished, I took the money. I got along well with the other workers. I didn't have any good friends there, but there wasn't any bad feeling or anything like that. Sometimes I had to go into the workshop. I knew the men had pictures in there, you know, pictures of women, so I didn't stay there any longer than I had to. In the beginning, some of them would whistle or ask me out, but I just ignored them, and after a while, they stopped bothering me. And then one day... Morning, dear. The boys have been doing a little home decorating, I see. The boys can decorate all they want with their filthy pictures on their side of the door. My side is for the public. Now, what red-blooded guy's gonna complain about her? Andy Chrome? Yes, certainly we can do a motorcycle gas tank. 
no, there's no need for you to flush it. We can do all that for you before it goes into the bath. Excuse me, just a sec. Oh. Very clever. What? That. They got you on a technicality. It's their side of the door. Value your business. No, sir, we don't want you to take your business elsewhere. No, sir. I'm terribly, terribly sorry. Look, I said I'm sorry. Customer complained to the supervisor. The supervisor came to see me. I complained about the picture. He said it's just a picture. I said if he had done something about this in the first place, none of this would have happened. He said if I wasn't so stuck up, the boys wouldn't want to tease me. So I said I'd come to the commission. He said if I did, I could look for another job. <sighs> Now that you have seen Indira's story, I have a few questions for you to answer. For this question, we do not have an official space on the screen for you to type your answer. And again, please do not enter your answers into the Q&A text box. Rather, feel free to jot down your answers on a piece of paper at your own desk, or just think about your response. Here are the questions for your consideration. Do you think this video scenario is an example of sexual harassment? If you answered no, why not? And if you answered yes, what behaviors made you believe that it is sexual harassment? Again, just think about your answers or jot them down at your desk. Take a few more seconds to think about this question. All right, please wrap up your answers and let's discuss the scenario. If you answered yes to the first question, you are correct. The video scenario was an example of sexual harassment. To answer the second question, the behaviors that constituted sexual harassment in this scenario included having the image of a woman in a bikini hanging on the door, Indira not wanting the image in her workplace, and Indira asking her supervisor to have the image removed. Next, think about the supervisor's actions. In the video, the supervisor did not do anything when Indira told him that she did not want the offensive image in her workplace. So take a moment to think about what actions would you have taken if you were in Indira's position. Again, this question is for your own reflection, so there isn't a space for you to submit an answer. Just think about the actions that you would have taken if you were experiencing something similar to Indira in your workplace. All right, please start wrapping up your answers to this question. So what actions might you have taken had you been in Indira's position? You could have documented the events that took place from the time that you saw the poster. It would have been helpful to keep the offensive poster as evidence. 
you could have talked to a human resource person or another manager. If you were in a unionized workplace, you might have consulted your union representative. And of course, you could have made a complaint to the Alberta Human Rights Commission at any time. Employers need to set a standard for appropriate behavior in the workplace, and employees need to follow the standard. The BAR bar standard stands for B, businesslike and professional, that everyone in the workplace is businesslike and professional in all dealings with co-workers or members of the public. A, acceptable in a work setting, that employees behave in a manner that is acceptable to everyone in the workplace. R, respectful, that employees are respectful of each other and act accordingly. Thanks very much, Sushila. You have provided some helpful content on harassment in the workplace so that if we have been or are being harassed, if we are witnessing harassment, or if we simply want to know more about what to do if harassment occurs, we have tools to support us and provide direction. So we have now come to the portion of the webinar where you have the opportunity to ask questions. Please note that your questions will remain anonymous to other participants on the webinar and will remain confidential with us here at the Alberta Human Rights Commission. Also note that we are unable to answer questions related to a specific human rights complaint. If you have questions about a specific situation, you can contact our confidential inquiry line. Or if you want more information about our complaint resolution process, you can visit our website. We will provide the contact information for both of these resources at the end of the webinar, or you can find links in the resource list. So at this time, please go ahead and type your questions related to this webinar in the Q&A text box and click Submit. If you have minimized your Q&A text box and you don't see it on your screen, click on the Q&A icon at the bottom of your screen. When submitting your questions in the Q&A text box, you will see two boxes. There's a smaller box at the bottom and a larger box at the top. Type your question into the smaller box at the bottom, and when you click Submit, you will see it pop up in the larger box above. So let's take our first question. It is, one of my employees is telling me about her coworker who is being harassed, but I haven't seen any evidence of this happening. How should I manage this, Sushila? Sushila, are you there? Yes. Sorry. If you are the supervisor or manager, you are required to take action if you see harassment or are told of it by your employees. You can start by talking to the employee who is being harassed and then following up with the alleged harasser. After that, you can decide what the next steps should be. Next question, Anne. Okay, our next question says, I work for a small company with no human resource department. If I'm being harassed by my boss, what should I do? You should report it to the director or the owner of the company. If you have a union in place, you could report it to the union as well. If you are being harassed on the grounds in the, the Alberta Human Rights Act that I listed, you can make a complaint to the Alberta Human Rights Commission. So those are the steps that I would suggest. Your next okay. question, in. All right, the next one here talks a little bit about employees' responsibilities, which you talked about before. The question is, is an employee's responsibility a legal responsibility or an ethical one? It, it is an ethical one. Um, the, the organization, the employer has a legal responsibility and the employee has more of an ethical responsibility in order to create the respectful work environment. Okay, thanks for that answer. Um, our next question here says, if a non-worker commits harassment on an employee, how would that be handled? So for example, if a guest of an employee or a manager makes a sexual comment to another employee, how should that be handled? 
the supervisor or manager should still talk to that to the guest to make sure that the harassment is stopped and it doesn't continue anyone that comes to the company's premises whether a customer or client would still have to ensure that they do not harass employees that are working in the in that organization any other question, Anne? Yeah, our next question asks about bullying. Um, it says, I witnessed a coworker being bullied by another coworker. I tried to stop the bullying, and now I am the target of the bullying. What should I do? First of all, um, if the bullying falls under the Alberta Human Rights Act, on the grounds in the Alberta Human Rights Act, you may have recourse under the Alberta Human Rights Act. You may be make, you may be able to make a complaint under the Alberta Human Rights Act. But if it is not under the Alberta Human Rights Act, I would still suggest keeping a record of the incident and reporting it to your supervisor, manager, or human resources. If you have a harassment prevention policy, I would suggest you following the procedures in the harassment prevention policy. Or if you are in a unionized work environment, then you may want to talk to the union as well because now you are being bullied because of intervening on behalf of another coworker. Uh, that's, those are the actions that I would take, uh, Anne. Okay, thanks, Sushila. Um, you talked a little bit about having our following the harassment prevention policy. We just have a question here that's asking about that. It says, our organization doesn't have a harassment prevention policy. How would I go about developing one? The commission held a webinar called Developing and Implementing a Harassment Prevention Policy. It is available as a webcast on the commission's e-learning page on, 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 its, web, on its website. Uh, you may want to listen to it to obtain information on how to develop and implement the policy. A link was also provided earlier in one of the slides in today's presentation. Also, on the Commission's website are information sheets called Sample Harassment Policy and another one called Developing and Implementing Effective Harassment and Sexual Harassment Policies that would help the implementation of your policy. I hope those um, help in, in your development of your policy. Okay, thanks Any very other much. questions? Um, that is all the time that we have for our questions and answers today. I want to everybody, thank everybody for submitting your questions and thank Sushila for your responses. Um, we hope that the answers provided were helpful for you if you are being harassed or are witnessing harassment in your workplace. If we were unable to get to your question, please feel free to email it to us at educationcommunityservices at gov.ab.ca or use the icon email in the audience console at the bottom of your screen to email us your question. We would now like to provide some final information and resources to help you with preventing and dealing with harassment in your workplace. Links to where you can find these resources will be provided at the end of the presentation or you can find them in the resource list. The Commission has two information sheets related to harassment. The first is harassment as a form of discrimination, and the second is sexual harassment. We also have two information sheets that provide additional information related to the areas and grounds that are protected under the Alberta Human Rights Act. They are protected areas and grounds under the Alberta Human Rights Act and areas and grounds protected, which is a quick, quick reference sheet that outlines which grounds are protected in each area. Please note that the Commission has developed a Notice of Changes to Alberta's Human Rights Legislation, which provides information about the two expressly prohibited grounds of discrimination, gender identity and gender expression. For more information about these protected grounds and to access this document, go to the Commission's website and search Notice of Changes. Another resource available to you is the video scenario that we watched on Indira's experiences with sexual harassment in her workplace. You can find it and other video scenarios in the e-learning section of our website or by going directly to our YouTube channel.
We also have a webcast that provides an overview of Alberta's human rights legislation, the Alberta Human Rights Act. The purpose of the Alberta Human Rights Act is to ensure that all Albertans are offered an equal opportunity to earn a living, find a place to live, and obtain services customarily available to the public without discrimination. The webcast is entitled Alberta Human Rights Act Overview and can be found on the e-learning page of our website or by going directly to our YouTube channel. Finally, if you have a specific situation or want to learn more about making a human rights complaint, you can call the Commission's Confidential Inquiry Line to speak to a human rights officer. The information is listed here, or you can visit the Contact Us page on our website. For more information or to access our resources, please visit our website at albertahumanrights.ab.ca. You can access our e-learning resources by clicking on the e-learning link in the Quick Links bar. To get copies of the information sheets noted or any other information sheets or information bulletins, click on Information Sheets under the Quick Links bar. To view the videos on our YouTube channel, go to youtube.com forward slash Alberta Human Rights or search Alberta Human Rights Commission in the search bar. You can also link to our YouTube channel from the e-learning page on our website. If you have questions, including questions about our resources or about our educational programs, you can contact us by email at educationcommunityservices at gov.ab.ca. Use the email icon in the audience console to email us now or visit the Contact Us page on our website.